This is actually Abby Smith from Solon. So she, this is a posture squat. So plate on top of the head and hands out in front forces an erect posture. This is a goblet squat. As you can see, she's going to get a lot more lean forward, but her back is still locked in and neutral. So good position. This is a zercher squat. So you're holding the bar in front and it forces the athletes to really lock in those erectors and keep a tall back. Front squat. So again, as you can see, she's got pretty flexible wrists. So she is able to handle that position and keep those elbows high. And then a back squat. So you can do high bar back squat, low bar back squat, but Back squat is just your traditional bar on back, and it's full range of motion. So there is no bottom in the squat. They stop where they need to, where they they can stop. So some are butt on the floor, and then this is a safety bar squat. So safety bar, she can actually take her hands off of those uh, handles, and we'll do lunge. This bar is a lot heavier, um, but it also allows us to load because, as you can see, the weights hang lower than they would if they were on the back. So it's another way to load the body and do different work. Now our pistol squat progression. So Jerry is doing a two down, or sorry, a one down, two up. So let me, so he's, so the progression is one down because it's easier to lower than it is to lift out of the hole, right? So we're going to do one down and then two up. So he'll do one down, two up here, one down to the box, and then two legs to stand up. One down to the box, two legs to stand up. Now he's doing one up, two down. Why do we do one up, two down if we've already owned one down? Well, the reason is like the down is gonna help add, is gonna add stress. And so we wanna make sure that he is able to be as, like have as much energy as he needs to get out of the hole with that single leg. So that's why we do that progression. Now we're just doing, a pistol squat. This is a pistol squat. So he's he's supporting at the top, you know, so you can actually lift that leg up. Now he's doing a single leg squat on a box. So this is what we would ideally like to get to. So if you can improve single leg strength, you know, you can improve the robust nature of the athlete. Now we're in split squat. So this is a front foot elevated split squat. I'm going to go back. So with the front foot elevated split squat, we do not want the front foot elevated more than six inches. So six inches should be the max elevation on the front foot, okay? The reason we do a front foot elevated split squat is it increases the range of motion. So we're getting greater range of motion on that back hip and we're allowing the leg that we're training, the front leg, to be under tension for a longer period of time. So we're getting more tendon training and we're getting um, just more adaptation and recruitment from that front leg because it's under tension for a longer period of time. So that's why we start with the front foot elevation. So front foot elevated split squat, doing both sides. Oh, little wobble there. There's definitely going to be some, I don't know if there'll be any bloopers in here, but there'll be some things to talk about. So this is just a traditional split squat. Both feet are on the same level. So regular split squat. She's holding goblet style, obviously. You can do this with dumbbells on the side, single dumbbells, barbells. Now she's going to do a dumbbell up. Rear foot elevated split squat. On rear foot elevated, the back foot should be no more than 12 inches, okay? No more than 12 inches high. So you can use a bench, you can use a box, you can use a, you know, some type of mat. And then here are jumps. So now she's doing rear foot elevated. Uh, Split squat jumps, we'll show that again. So this would be a progression, like each cycle, each three to four weeks, rear foot elevated, split squat jumps. Now here's showing it with a barbell, 